Hello and welcome to another complete Cambridge IGCSE PE lesson. In this video, we'll break down and simplify 17 recent past exam questions on Chapter 1, the Skeletal and Muscular System. If you enjoy this video, consider subscribing to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and check out the complete exam preparation course on Udemy, which is essentially the cheat code to your Cambridge GCSE, IGCSE or 9 to 1 PE exam. It provides you with mark scheme based responses to any question that could be asked and focuses only on the information that comes up in papers, meaning you'll waste no time learning unnecessary content. The link is in the description if you want to find out more or watch some previews. Let's begin. Question number one is on topic 1.6 and as always you can head down to the description of this video and find links to short summary videos containing literally everything you need to know on chapter one. So if you struggle to answer a question, go and watch the relevant video, then come back and attempt it. State two muscle fiber types, so a really easy question to start us off for two marks. The two muscle fiber types are slow twitch or type 1 and fast twitch or type 2, which is confirmed here by the mark scheme. It does say accept other recognized muscle fiber types, so if you had put type 1 and type 2, you would have got the marks. Okay, question number two is on topic 1.3, movements at joints. The diagrams show a basketball player at different stages of shooting. State the type of movement that occurs from diagram A to diagram B at each of the following joints. So which type of movement occurs at the shoulder joint and the elbow joint? The shoulder joint here, we can see that the arm is becoming raised up as the performer shoots, and that indicates flexion. The opposite movement would be extension, which would be the, when the arm moves downwards and backwards at the shoulder joint. And then at the elbow joint we have extension because the elbow is becoming straightened or the angle at the joint increases um, during that movement, so that is extension there. And uh, that's confirmed by the mark scheme as you can see. But we'll move on now to question number three on topic 1.5. Describe the antagonistic muscle action that creates the type of movement occurring at the elbow joint from diagram A to diagram B. So we already established that that type of movement, the straightening of the elbow there, is extension. And we need to describe the antagonistic muscle action for extension at the elbow. So the tricep is the agonist muscle. It contracts and shortens. So as it shortens, it pulls on the bones in the forearm and straightens out the elbow or creates extension at that joint. The bicep is the antagonist. It relaxes and lengthens to allow the movement to occur. So where have the marks come from here? As you can see from the mark scheme, we would have got two marks simply for stating the two muscles, biceps and triceps, the two muscles involved in that movement, and then another mark for stating that the biceps relax or lengthen, which I have done um, here, so it relaxes and lengthens or that the bicep act as the antagonist, which I've also included. So a bit more detail that I've provided here. And then the other mark comes from stating that the triceps contract and shorten, which I've mentioned, or that the triceps act as the prime mover or the agonist, the muscle doing the work. Okay, next question, topic 1.2. Name the type of synovial joint at each of the following. So the shoulder joint and the elbow. Which type of synovial or freely movable joint can we find at the shoulder and the elbow? So the shoulder is a ball and socket joint and the elbow is a hinge joint. These are the two types of synovial joint that you need to know about. Okay, name three components of a synovial or freely movable joint and describe a different function of each component for six marks. So this is a really easy six marks because all you need to do is name three components of a synovial joint. That will get you three marks already and describe the function of each component for the remaining three marks. So I've gone for synovial membrane, which lines the joint cavity and secretes or releases synovial fluid into that cavity. Synovial fluid, which lubricates the joint and reduces friction. And then component three, I've gone for cartilage, which cushions the joint or absorbs shock, preventing the bones from knocking together and creating damage. The other two components we could have gone for were ligament, which hold the bones together, or keep the bones in place at joints, or the joint or fibrous capsule which surrounds and protects the joint and helps to hold the bones together as well. So the next question on topic 1.1 is describe one function of a tendon. So what do tendons do? What's their function or role? Well, tendons connect muscle to bone and therefore pull on bones as the muscles contract. 
uh, enabling movement. So we would have got a mark simply for stating that tendons connect muscle to bone, as you can see down there in the mark scheme. But I've added a bit of adi additional detail here as well, and I've said uh, that when the muscles contract, the tendon enables the muscle to pull on the bone, therefore creating movement. Okay. Next question, the diagram shows the human skeleton with different joint types labelled A, B, C and D. Name the joint type at A, B and C for three marks. So which types of joints can we find at A, B and C? A indicates the cranium, which is composed of several flat plate-like bones, which are fused together to form fixed, immovable or fibrous joints. Um, in the cranium there. Joint B is cartilaginous, so the vertebrae here that make up the spine are separated or joined together by cartilage, which allows movement or a small amount of movement in multiple directions. And then at C we have the knee joint, which is a hinge joint, but more generally a synovial or freely movable joint. So let's have a look at the mark scheme. You would have got a mark for saying fixed, immovable or fibrous for that first one. Slightly movable or cartilaginous for the second joint, and then freely movable synovial or hinge for joint C. Okay, let's move on. Name two bones that form the joint labelled C. So we've got the knee joint here. We need to name two of the three bones that make up that joint, and I've gone for the femur or thigh bone here, and the patella, which is the kneecap. But we could have also gone for the tibia, which is the largest bone in the lower leg there. Please note that the fibula, the smaller bone that runs alongside the tibia, would not have got you a mark because it sits just beneath the head of the tibia and doesn't actually articulate at the knee joint. Next question, topic 1.2. Describe different functions of the three named components of the joint type found at both C and D for six marks. So D, we have a ball and socket joint. C, we have a hinge joint. They're both synovial or freely movable. So again, we need to provide three components of a synovial joint and the functions of each of those components. This time I've gone for ligament, synovial fluid and joint capsule. We won't spend very long on this question because we've already gone through exactly the same question a few moments ago. So pause the video here if you want to have a look at my answers this time or check the mark scheme against your own responses. Next question, describe the difference between the joints labelled C and D in terms of their range of movement and stability. So one mark for talking about the difference between the range of movement of those two joints and then the other mark for the difference in stability. So between D, which is a ball and socket joint at the hip, and C, the hinge joint at the knee. So we'll start off by looking at the range of movement. And I've talked about, or I've stated that joint D has a greater range of movement than joint C. Okay, so ball and socket joints are capable of abduction, adduction, rotation, circumduction, flexion and extension, whereas hinge joints, um, joint C there, the knee joint, are only capable of extension and flexion. So there's my first difference between those joints. And the second one, talking about stability now, joint D is less stable than joint C. So ball and socket joints are less stable um, than hinge joints. Okay, so you can have a look through this mark scheme. I've covered the most obvious points here already, but there are a couple of other things or differently worded responses that you could have gone for. So take your time to have a look through that if you had a go at this question yourself. Okay, next question on topic 1.1, name two bones at the elbow. So probably the easiest type of question you're gonna get this one, just to name bones that make up a certain joint or articulate at a certain joint. This time the elbow, and I've gone for the humerus which is the only bone in the upper arm, and then the radius, which is one of two bones in the forearm, the other one being the ulna, which would have also got you a mark. Moving on, the diagram shows two stages of shooting at a basketball with some of the joints of the performer labelled A, B and C. Name the type of synovial joint labelled B. So which type of joint can we find at the shoulder? That type is a ball and socket. You can see that these kind of questions are repeating themselves a lot here, so very easy marks if you put in a little bit of work and uh, get the repetition you need to remember all of these key points. But we'll move on to the next one, which is to name the type of movement at the joint labelled B from stage one to stage two. So what type of movement is happening here at the shoulder from this position to this position? Well, moving the arm upwards at the shoulder is flexion whereas moving it downwards and backwards would be extension. So one easy mark again, flexion at the shoulder joint there for one mark. Next one is name the type of movement at the joint labelled C from stage one to stage two. So we're looking at the ankle joint here, 
And as you can see, they're pushing off from the ground uh, to jump at the point of shooting. So we have plantar flexion or the pointing down of the toes away from the leg. So that's plantar flexion there for one mark. And then name the agonist muscle for this movement. So which is the muscle doing the work? Which is the prime mover for plantar flexion at the ankle joint? And that one is the gastrocnemius or the calf muscle on the back of the lower leg. But we could have also gone for the soleus, um, which combines with the gastrocnemius to create plantar flexion there. Okay, next question is to name the type of movement at the joint labeled A from stage one to stage two. So now we're looking at the elbow joint. And as you can see, we're straightening or extending that elbow joint, um, straightening the arm. So that is extension for another really easy, simple mark. And then finally, describe the antagonistic muscle action for this movement. So for extension at the elbow, we need to describe the antagonistic muscle action. We've already done this exact same question, uh, but here we, it also prompts us that we need to name the muscles involved as well. And this one's only worth three marks. The previous one was worth four. So let's see where these marks are coming from. I've gone for the tricep is the agonist muscle. It contracts and shortens. And the bicep is the antagonist and it relaxes and lengthens to allow that movement to occur. If we look at the mark scheme here, we would have only got one mark for naming both of the muscles. So stating tricep and bicep would have got us one mark. Okay, that's why I've not given a mark for, for tricep here, only for bicep. Once I'd included both of those muscles, I gave myself a mark. And then two marks for uh, each part, or sorry, one mark for each part of, of uh, the description. So one mark for any of these points, the triceps contract and shorten, the triceps act as the agonist or prime mover, the biceps relax and lengthen, and they are the uh, antagonist muscle there as well. So let's move on. In fact, that was the last question for this session on chapter one, the skeletal and muscular system. Remember to like and subscribe if you benefited from this video and leave a comment down below if you have any suggestions for how these videos could be improved. Also remember to check out my new course on Udemy, the complete exam preparation course which contains literally everything you need to excel in your final exam. As always I hope you found this lesson useful and I'll see you next time for 9 questions on chapter 2, the respiratory system.